I would say that the community seems to be very happy that after two years they have another bishop. The impression they give me is also that they are happy with me, but that's an impression which I hope will stay. <laughs> um, I don't think there's much difference in Gibraltar uh, from the time I left, although it's a long time ago. The people still have their good nature and their friendliness, you know. Obviously, things in the church would have changed a bit. You know that uh, as time goes on, not only in Gibraltar, but in most developed countries, um, those who, let's say, go to church, I, will, I don't like saying those who practice their religion because that's another matter. But those who go to church tend to become less, and that's a problem we have to deal with. Um, the young people also are living in another world from the one I was used to 20 years ago. Things have changed a lot. So in that respect, Gibraltar is a bit different. You know, the young people are different people from the young who lived, let's say, 20, 30 years ago. But still, Gibraltar is a lovely place to live in, and I'm glad I'm here, really. I want to pick up on something that you've said. The church-going section of the Catholic community in Gibraltar is dwindling, and this must be a matter of huge concern for you, not just, of course, in Gibraltar, but in the wider world as well. It is a challenge. And uh, what the Pope is trying to do is to try to attract more people towards the church or towards God, let's put it that way. Because God comes before the church. You know, if people have a good relationship with God, they will have a good relationship with the church that follows. So he is showing that God is merciful, he is full of love, and that he welcomes anybody. And I think that's the message we have to put across, that the church is there for everybody, and it welcomes everybody. Now, obviously, you can never force people to come into the church, but you can make things a bit more attractive for them, maybe, you know. But presumably, the church's teachings are the same ones historically, people are finding that they're not attracted to the teachings of the church. That can't change because the teachings themselves can't change. Well, the teachings of the church, the basic ones, you know, because there is development in doctrine also. Uh, but the basic ones are always there. And I don't think those teachings uh, put people off in a way, because they are attractive teaching. If you read what the Gospel says about loving others, doing good to others, God being forgiving, of treating everybody well, you know. Those are challenges for everybody, you know. It's, it's not something you put off. Obviously, it's not an easy life. If you want to follow what God wants, it's not easy because you can't do whatever you like. <laughs> and that's, that's the problem, you know. But I think people like challenges, and that's how we have to present it. That God is inviting us, and he is challenging us to live a life that makes us happy. Because there are many things which we think will make us happy, and then at the end, we find that instead of making us happy, they cause a lot of problems. Wherever the church faces challenges, it flourishes. When the church is having an easy time, let's put it that way, then the church suffers. Let me just take you to the statement that you made on the eve of your ordination as bishop regarding a gay marriage in Gibraltar. Uh, are these comments uh, the type of thing that can drive people in Gibraltar who have been progressing on this issue uh, away from the church? I don't believe so. First of all, what I said is nothing new. What I said makes sense. And uh, as I said, this is a question of terminology. It's not a question of rights. You know, the um, Partnership Act in Gibraltar gave all rights that married people have 
to gay couples. So the rights are there. Now, I understand that what gay couples want is to be known as married and not just as being in a partnership. So it's a question of terminology. So in order to do that, we are changing the meaning of marriage. And that's what I find worry, uh, worrying, that we change the meaning of a word, which stood for something solid, and now what is it standing for? Here. But the definition of marriage has evolved uh, over the centuries no, itself. It hasn't evolved. It was changed by Parliament. It hasn't evolved. You know, Parliament changed the, me the meaning of marriage. You know, the word was always understood in a certain way for thousands of years. But then there was this political sort of and cultural uh, movement to try to make gay partners and heterosexual partners uh, having the term marriage applied to them both. So in a way, when I say I am married, what do I mean? Am I married to a woman or to a man? People don't understand that. And that's, that's the equivocation that I said, you know, may cause more harm than good in the long run, not now. But in the long run, it may. Are you happy with the state of the clergy, the priesthood in Gibraltar? Well, the priests are doing their best, really, in the circumstances. We are not many. And when you consider that in each parish there is one priest and he's tied to the parish, in a way, there's little time to relax. You know, uh, I appreciate all the efforts that they are doing. Obviously, in any institution and situation, one has to try to move forward and to try to satisfy the needs of the community more. And that's what we have to look at, you know, but I'm not dissatisfied with the priests, I'm satisfied with them. What I may try to do is to see whether we can do more than what we are doing. That's really so there's a possibility for a, a bit of a restructure, some, uh, some, minor, some minor changes to the, to the way that things are run. Changes are always necessary in any institution. If you never change, things start going bad, you know? So changes would be necessary. How you do them, when you do them, how you approach them, that is the problem. And that's where one has to be careful not to upset the apple cart, sort of, you know? That's what it is. Okay, and just finally on, on a lighter note, uh, just uh, tell us how you're settling in to, to the community here uh, since you uh, were announced as bishop. Yeah, well, to be honest, I didn't feel I have to settle in. <laughs> you know, I settled in very quickly, people knew me. You know, like uh, this week I had a reception because of the government, uh, you know, UNESCO giving the certificate to Gorem's cave and I, at first I said, what am I going to do in a reception, you know, people? And I realized it was the easiest thing in my life, you know, because I knew everybody practically. So there was no problem really, you know, I could, I could relate immediately to the people here.